All right, hey guys, welcome back. Uh, fourth and final video from me for this unit. We are now dealing with specific organizations that exist within the social institution of the economy um, because our economy is a free market economy, uh, free market capitalistic economy. We are dealing with free market capitalistic corporations and specifically food corporations. So what I've done We've still got our uh, machine up here, but now what I've done is I've focused in just on that lower right quadrant. So instead of society, this is social institutions. Culture would be over on this side. Interaction order would be up there. We're just focusing in on the, uh, on the social institution, the organizations within the social institution. Okay, um, food corporations are gonna be aggregates because they are organizations. They are aggregates of statuses. Uh, and what we're going to see are the basic, the basic statuses that exist for food corporations. So it shouldn't be a huge surprise that we're going to start out with owner and manager because we talked about those being categories of statuses that exist within free market capitalism. Owners are going to have the same norms that we talked about before. Uh, generally, these are going to be wealthy people who uh, own, in our society, who own shares of the corporation, which their norm is to provide money to buy plants, animals, chemicals, machinery, and labor. Uh, same, same norms, now we've just made it a little bit more specific for agriculture or for food production. Managers are going to have the same basic set of norms that managers had uh, when we talked about free market capitalism in the first place. Um, using that money to buy the machinery, to buy the uh, labor, managing or organizing the labor in a particular way, and maximizing profit for the, uh, for the owners. Now, where we are going someplace different now is we are expanding the category of labor to deal with, again, this is an oversimplification, but uh, to deal with the specific tasks necessary for an economy. So an economy deals with, uh, it's a, an economy is a patterned way of meeting needs. And now, what are the patterned ways that we meet our needs for food in our society? Well, the, it begins the way uh, any agricultural society would begin with farmers. In this case, we're going to call them growers. In the film that you will see, Food, Inc., uh, they are generally speaking referred to as growers because a farmer sort of connotes a degree of independence. And these people are not independent farmers. Very, very little of the food that you consume, unless you're going to a farmer's market, very little of the food you consume actually comes from what we would think of as a farmer. An independent person who owns their own land and grows their crops Generally speaking, what we're talking about are employees. So we're going to call these people growers, the people who actually grow the plants and in a kind of what you will probably, most of you, even those of you who eat meat, will be a little bit heartbroken for, who grow animals. Uh, their norm, let me see if I have anything other than that, uh, just raising the plants and the animals. Uh, after the animals and plants are raised, because obviously a sheep or a, a pig still looks like a pig, a cow still looks like a cow, but when you show up at the supermarket, those animals have been transformed. The people who transform, the status that transforms are food processors. And it's their job, their norm, is to prepare the plants or animals for consumption. So just like how we end up, the, the reason, well, we talked about it with just a second ago with regard to um, with regard to animals. What you end up with is a plastic wrapped cut of meat that wasn't that way, obviously, on the farm. Um, nor was every apple as flawless as the apples that we end up with. The the people who are processing them are taking apples and picking the ones that are that are good enough for us to appeal to us and getting rid of the ones that don't. So processors, they are the people who are preparing the plants or animals for our consumption. Then you get transporters. Generally speaking, there will be some transportation from growers to processors. The people who are growing are not putting the, the animals and um, plants on trucks or on trains or on planes or whatever. So these people are also oftentimes going to be either employees of the uh, of the corporation 
or employees of a smaller corporation that is subcontracted to do this work. But these are other people who are part of this process. And just to, like, I mean, I know that this is going to be familiar in some ways, but it kind of helps to make it unfamiliar. For most of our society, or most of our species existence, you and I were out doing this stuff. We were the ones who were either hunting and gathering or growing our own food. We were the ones who were processing that food. Um, if we were, if we had uh, livestock, we were the ones who were killing it. We were the ones who were skinning it. We were the ones who were preparing it to be cooked. Uh, all of these are steps that we have that have been externalized from you and from me. Okay, so we've got growers, we've got processors, we've got transporters. Um, the last two are things that we don't normally think of, but are crucial in the process of getting the food into our homes. Researchers. And researchers are parts of all of these big food corporations. It is their job to create these, uh, I'm sorry, to create the products that are grown by adding fertilizer or pesticide to them. Or, uh, or herbicides to, to keep the weeds away. It is these people who tinker with the genes of these animals and plants and make them things that are going to be more um, appealing to us, more flavorful or more, um, or more visually appealing. I mean, whether it is actually modifying genes like in, in, the, in sort of the new GMO Way, or if it is just cross-breeding to be able to selectively breed uh, species to be more appealing to us. Um, some of you guys may know this, but I, I believe it's Honeycrisp. I wish I were winging this. I think it's Honeycrisp apples. Honeycrisp apples were de uh, developed in a lab in at the University of Minnesota. So if you've ever eaten one, and they're delicious, but these are done by researchers. Okay, so they're part of, uh, of agricultural business or food corporations. And then we've got marketers, and marketers are going to be a big deal in uh, two, at least two, or in, in at least the two readings that you have for this week, and probably in Food Inc. as well. Marketers are the people who are trying to convince us that their particular corporation's food is better for us or is going to bring us more enjoyment than another corporation's food. If you think about this as a business, if you think about corp food corporations, there's only so much food that you and I can eat. Like, I could buy a hundred shirts or a thousand shirts. I could conceivably have a limitless appetite for shirts, but I could only eat a certain amount of calories each day. All of us in America each day can only eat a certain, even if we overeat, even if we binge eat, there's only a certain amount that can be, uh, that can be consumed. So these corporations are, generally speaking, trying to fight each other for market share. And the way you do that is you have got to convince people to spend money on your food rather than somebody else's. Okay, those are the general statuses that I'm going to want you to be familiar with uh, as you go into watching Food, Inc. and reading the couple of readings that we have. Um, you take all of these together and aggregate them and give them a fictional identity like Tyson or Purdue or Green Giant or Nestle or whatever, and you've got yourself a corporation. You've got an organization, a fictional symbol that is an aggregation of a bunch of statuses that would be done um, even if it was outside the context of an organization. All right, uh, last thing to know about, um, about food corporations before I let you loose on the documentary and on the readings. Um, with free market capitalism, this social institution of the economy is warped in a really important way. Um, and it's a way that is going to slap you across the face a hundred times in the documentary. Um, it's warped by the addition of a second imperative. So the imperative, the first imperative of the economy is to meet our need for survival. 
the second imperative in a free market capitalist economy, um, and in particular right now with regard to food, is to make a profit. That's not like a huge aha insight, but it leads to a consequence that we don't normally think all that much about. When I put this in the context of the economy and it's meeting our need for survival, we kind of say, okay, so this isn't the way we've always done it, but yeah, it's meeting our need for survival. But when we're doing it in a free market capitalist society, what's important is that meeting our need for survival is not the most important thing. It is one thing. Making a profit is a second thing, which means if there's ever a conflict between those, it may be that meeting our need for survival comes out second. That the food that we, that, that we have hit a point in our society, in our history as a species, where meeting our need for survival might be done poorly, deliberately poorly. They may be meeting our need for survival in a way that makes us sick or makes us unhealthy because that's not the only imperative. The second imperative is to make a profit. And it could be that meeting our need for survival is no longer just meeting our need for survival in like a in a in a lasting and as good as we can type of way. It may just be we meet our need for survival well enough to keep these people alive, but not in an ideal way. That's thoroughly depressing and you'll to read and see about it and you won't like it and I apologize but uh, it's my job. Next up for videos is the documentary Food Inc.